All right, good morning. Welcome to the FTS Bet Slip Wednesday, the 23rd of June. Apparently, I got the date wrong yesterday, Scotty. Doing that, I don't know how I did that, but I didn't even notice. Um, I think it's probably to do with, I mean, I, I, I'm, I am in a bit of shock. I wish that people could see what I dial into, and I think that's what puts me off. I mean, <laughs> I've got a fucking clue what you look like this morning. He's got a Houston Dynamo bright orange shirt with silver stripes on. Yeah, polo shirt, yeah. He's got something on his head, which I can't even see. It's like some type of orange bandana. Maybe you look like a pirate. <laughs> um, yeah, why would you want to look like a pirate? It's probably the... I think question. I'm ironing into my Johnny Depp looks. Oh, my fucking days. Dear me. If, if I don't mention George Clooney again, can we get you off Johnny Depp very quickly? <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll mention Johnny Depp again, to be honest. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um... Right, so we have seen, um, did you watch the England game last night? No, I did not. Really? Really? I watched the Scotland game. Wasn't Modric. I mean, I am I am a bit sort of, I sound almost a bit drooly and fawny, but he is one of my favourite ever players. Oh, he, he's an excellent player. And it was a Modric show last night, wasn't it? He's in, my, he's in my top three of all time, definitely, particularly. I mean, I sort of talk now about going to Spurs and um, not enjoying it, even when we got beat when he was playing. I just love watching him play football. Yeah. he's um, He was, a, that was an absolute masterclass last night. It was, and that, that, that finish for his goal. Yeah, just just brilliant. And unfortunately, we lose the Scots. What were we betting on? Scott, was it Scotch eggs? Scotch rolls? Scotch goals? What was it we bet on? <laughs> uh, what was it we bet on? Huh? Um, we bet on uh, four or more team goals for Scotland. And, and we got what, one? One. So, between Russia and Scotland, how many goals did they get? I think maybe three. Three, and we were aiming for nine, weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I could say that was probably a little bit unfortunate. Only, only just Scotland. missed, didn't we? Only just missed out, didn't we? But Russia, I think, was a mile, was a mile off. Um, what was it with Modric, though? You'd have thought they'd beaten France the way he collapsed to the ground at, at, onto his knees at the final whistle, Modric. Did you see that? Yeah, but he's 35, 36 years old. Yeah, I suppose he was knackered, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, and, and it does tend to fall on his shoulders that, you know, yeah. he is the talisman, the main man. I'm not having a word said against him. He was absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I'll uh, shut up on that. And we've got the dual forecast up. Get that on the yeah. sheet, son. Get that on Yeah, the... I've already done it. I've already done uh, it. No one saw that coming, did they? They'd all written that one off. Um, but, yeah, it was uh, unlikely. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, I'm going to be honest, I am going to miss the Scots. I had some great banter, real good banter through the through this um, couple of weeks. been great fun. Um, I do genuinely love the Scots people. and Yeah, I do. I, love... I cheered quite loud, didn't I, do when they scored? I love the sense of humour they bring to things. I love the, um, I do love the rivalry and interaction. Even everything on, on my phone has been going non-stop. Was going all the time last night, having a laugh with people. The um, even on Twitter, the, the somebody said Happy Diego Day yesterday because it was 25th and a 25th or 26th anniversary or whatever it was of Diego Maradona's handball. Whenever oh, that was. right, okay. Eight six or twenty, and. Uh, I got a happy Diego day. That did make me laugh. <laughs> I hadn't seen that before. Um, so, yeah, great fun, guys. Uh, sorry you're out, but basically you just don't score goals, do you? Uh, no. And you did get completely and utterly pasted last night. It was um, it was an absolute Croatian dominance masterclass. Yeah, it was. Um, I'm quite happy I don't have to look at John McGinn again because... Uh, Oh, God, the amount of chances that fell to him and he obliterated. Yeah, and they all leave, keep going on about him, this Super John McGinn thing. Yeah. So um, somebody said to me, is there anything that John McGinn can't do last night? I said, score. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, goodbye the Scots. And obviously England um, did play 1-1-0. I don't know what it was like. I did see that Sancho got a bit of game time, but I didn't read much. I actually had to turn Twitter off because there's a guy on Twitter, Stats Bit, and I think he was like the Aston Villa um, social media account last night. All it was Grealish this, Mings that. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I can't handle this, so I'm just going to turn Twitter off. 
Well, <laughs> well Beth finished. mate watched it and he kept sending me updates. Yeah, you finished but, uh, 11th, Statsy. You finished 11th, son. You were up there at one stage, but you finished 11th. Calm, yeah. calm yourself down. Back in your little boxes, you Villa fans, <laughs> honestly. Um, so we move on to today. Last four games, isn't it? And then we have got two days off. We have, yeah. Uh, I will. I probably won't do a podcast Friday. I'll probably do one tomorrow. Um, I've got a 50th birthday bash to go on Friday. Oh, excellent. So, um, but I'll have details of that uh, later. But right, yes, we have got today um, Group E up first. Slovakia playing Spain. Sweden playing Poland. Um, both these groups today, E and F, very, very tight. Pretty much any combination of teams can go through. Um, Spain... I have watched both their games. Um, they've been the 1.24 today, which uh, Germany are lower later, I think, but that's the lowest of uh, the matches we've seen pre-game. Um, they've been pretty, but toothless so yeah. far. Um, and obviously they have to approach this game now as a must win. Um, and play a Slovakia side who only need a point to probably surprisingly progress. I don't think I'd have had Slovakia in my uh, oh, in my 16 teams going forward. Uh, Spain get Busquets back. Um, he's coming. He's 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 doing well actually because he played must have played for Scotland last night because after all I was being told how good they were. We had John Busquets playing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, John Busquets begins. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's back after missing the first couple of games. Um, I can't see anything in the prices that attracts me to have a bet. Goals, I'd probably be a layer rather than a backer, to be honest. So but, low. Huh? The odds are so low on goals. Yeah, yeah exactly. And given that, given how toothless they've been, you know, yeah. I've, I've still got huge squiggle question marks over the likes of Marata, Marata um, if he plays. So I don't know whether the Villarreal lad might, might play. Well, they played them both last time, didn't they? Yeah, so it didn't, it didn't seem to work, did it? No. Um, I think Maratta just gets in the way of anybody when he's on the pitch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. he's, not for Mar- he's not for me at all, he really is. No, he? nor me. So I've got an unofficial one here, Scotty. Um, so this isn't, for, this isn't this isn't a for official results, but obviously it is going to be a tight group. If Slovakia, I expect, are going to set out and to try and stay in the game and not concede, I don't think they're going to be at all gung-ho, only needed a point. Um, so if it gets to half time and it's nil nil one nil or nil one, um, I've on FTS I've spoken about a two ahead method. Yeah. I've got a video on it. Uh, so it's an unofficial two ahead game for me. If it's nil nil one nil nil one, I would say to people have a look at half time. If the two ahead price is round about two, you know anything really one point nine through to two point one two point two, um, I would play it as a two ahead game. Um, because if it is that, Spain may start having to get a bit desperate to get a goal. Yeah. The game may open up a little bit in the second half. So uh, I can't guarantee with my current domestic situation that I'll be able to monitor this and put it on the Telegram group. So I just wanted to get it out there now that it's at your own peril. But if those conditions are met, it would be a game I would look at for two ahead. Do Uh, I put it on the sheet or do I leave it off the sheet? Uh, you can just put on the sheet that I've uh, advised a two ahead for people who haven't yeah. there, just and just put it on there that it's a it's an unofficial. You know, if you play it, you play it. If you don't, you don't. Um, I, you know, we're not going to sit and monitor the prices and entries and exits. For me, I would. For me, for me, if a goal goes in early enough, I would green it up and just move on um, and not worry about it. But it's a, a little unofficial one just for the fact that I can't find a bet in the game. But I think I think that. This is one, you know, if you are watching as a couple of these tonight, that things may develop in the second half as teams know what they've got to do to qualify. Yeah. Um, so that's it from me on that game. I don't know whether you've got anything. I have. Probably cards bets, have you? Or yeah. Slovakia team goals? Uh, team cards, yeah. Uh, okay, so off you go. All right, okay. Uh, Slovakia coming to this on three points, having beaten 10-man Poland and loomed to Sweden last time out. Slovakia will go through if they can beat Spain or if they draw and Sweden avoid defeat. I think they have been the weakest in the group so far. And if Poland at 1-1 had not lost a player, I suspect they would have gone on to win that game. Poland, that is. 
They were second best with Sweden and deserved to lose. Head-to-head shows they've beat Spain just one in the last six, and I can't see them doing that today either. They come into this game having just had two shots on target from the two games so far, which is, does, does not bode well for today be the best team in the group, almost certainly needing the win. Spain sit on two points after drawing on both games so far. They know a win will see them through to the round of 16, and a draw would see them finish third on three points, and who knows if that would be enough. They've been to Slovakia every time they've met here in Spain, which bodes well for today. But with two draws so far, that's four draws in a row at major tournaments for them. They did miss a penalty v Poland, but personally feel Poland possibly deserved it for their brave approach to the game compared to Sweden, who largely tried to defend the whole match, but even then still could have scored a couple. Like you, I don't like goals at all. They're far too low. Um, so I, I found that a bet with Slovakia over one and a half yellow cards. I'm glad that it's the best price is a bet 365 at 1.8. Marathon only go 1.73, which is surprising, based on the way they settle cards. And Skybet go 1.67. Sporting index is 18 to 21. So you're needing a sending off or three cards for Slovakia. Slovakia. Slovakia's last 20 competitive away games has averaged just over four, and in those games they've averaged just over two themselves, and did get three v Sweden last time out. Spain's last 20 competitive games that their opponents have averaged just over two. I just can't see Slovakia getting anything, and that would leave them on three points in third, and, and ensure if they would get through to the round of 16, and surely will get frustrated trying to get the ball. As as and when Spain go in front, they're a team that will still dominate the ball. So the game barely changes, which I like. So I can only see Slovakia frustrations. The referee is Bjorn Kuypers. He did the Denmark v Belgium game and gave four cards. And my note says he was very fair and did not miss too much. He's not a high card ref, but seemed to give out when warranted. He did do one of Slovakia's games back in Euro qualifiers in 2014 and gave out seven cards four of which were for Slovakia. More of the same would be nice. That's me for that game. Okay, mate. Well done. Right. Good stuff. Best of luck with that. Thank uh, you very much. I think I might need it at the moment. And then and then the next game is Sweden-Poland. Um, as you say, Sweden avoid defeat. They're through. Most likely through anyway, but we'll want to guarantee it for sure. Um, Poland need a win to get a top two spot. Uh, and the group is actually so tight that Poland can win, Slovakia, Spain can draw, and Poland can top the group, which yeah. you know, shows you how tight this group is. Um, Poland have only won one of their last nine, and that was against the footballing giants of Andorra. Um, so they have got Cry uh, Chivyak back. The guy was suspended after he got sent off in the first game. Nice pronunciation. Uh, yeah, I'm all over it, aren't they? Um, they have got Lewandowski, obviously, who can score goals, scored a cracking header in the last game. Um, they're going to have to chase this game, which is sort of the situations I like. Um, and I thought the goals markets here are very fair. So it is my standard over one and a half bet here on goals in Sweden, Poland. So if there's a goal first 20 minutes, just leave the game. But if it's nil nil 20 minutes, back over one and a half goals for one point, split it in three, a third on 20 minutes, uh, 27 and 35. Goal goes in when you've got any party stake matched, remove your liability. Um, if the goal goes in too late, as per um, I think the Belgium game the other day was there, then you, out, yeah. Yeah, then um, just let it ride and, and hope for another one and you get the full lot. So for me, Sweden, Poland, I haven't got a view on who's going to win. I think both are capable of winning. I suppose gun to my head. I mean, the market's 2.74 Poland, 2.82. But I do think the way that um, Poland are going to have to try and chase the game, there'll be chances. So that's it for me, son. Right, OK. Um, I'll start on Sweden. Sweden coming to the final game with four points, as you said, and sit top of the group. Having drawn with Spain in an awful game where they largely defended the entire match, yet despite that, did create a couple of excellent chances that they, they missed. Last time they took time out, they deservedly beat Slovakia 1-0 in a game that they went for in the second half and it paid off. Even a draw, as you said, would guarantee a top two finish and a defeat still would see them having a very good chance of being in the best third place finish. 
Poland come into this final game on just one point, having lost their first game v Slovakia. A game I've mentioned already that at 1-1 they lost a player and I think they may have gone on to win that game. Um, they then in the last game they've got a very creditable draw v Spain where I was quite impressed with how they set up and I do feel they deserved the draw. Yes, OK, Spain missed a penalty, but they were brave, unlike Sweden, in their approach and was very glad that they, they ended up getting the draw and scoring. Poland can go through in second place with a win if the other games does not end in a draw, but need a win minimum. They will need to do something they have not done in their last seven v Sweden and win as they have lost them all. But the last meeting was back in 2004. This is a no bet game for me. But from what I've seen, I actually prefer Poland of the two teams and was impressed with their approach to Spain. So if I was really pushed and someone said, well, right, OK, what would you bet? I would be betting Poland, draw no bet. I don't see Poland losing the game, but I do. I could easily see a draw. Um, so I think it's a low risk bet, but it's just not one I would do. Um, but if someone wanted something, that's what I would do. But uh, it's a game with Sweden and I don't tend to get involved in goals. Add to that, Poland have never scored more than one in, in a game in their previous 13 European Championship matches. And of late, they do tend to concede. So, um, yeah, it's a no bet game for me. But I, as usual, I will follow you in on your trade. OK, mate. So you'll make a few quid then. There you go. Yeah. You can fill your boots. Yeah. Um, right. And then we bring the um, group stages to a close with uh, fascinating couple of matches to be honest yeah. uh, this evening um, all of them can go through for English fans added sort of um, interest of we find out who England will lose to in the next round yeah. <laughs> um, so um, Germany are 1.2 to beat Hungary uh, yeah. Germany I thought they were excellent against Portugal um, I, thought, I thought they did okay against France to be honest that was always it was a bit more bit more of a chess match than a football match so you know I think it was a bit harsh when people started saying they were in trouble after that they were absolutely superb against Portugal particularly after going one nil down they started the game well Portugal scored against the run of play um, and then they were just superb you know I thought they they were brilliant Um, over two and a half is just 1.45 yeah Um, and I do think that despite a plucky draw against France um, at home for Hungary, going to Munich to a playing a German team, got a bit of a point to prove after their World Cup exit. You know, yeah. this would be if they went out of this group, it would be the first time ever they they've gone out in consecutive big tournaments. Um, I just can't see them letting that happen. Happen again. The prices are nowhere near anything for me. Even I looked at you know trying to have perhaps Dutch some scores, 2-0, 3-0, but yeah. nothing in, no value in any of the pricing for me. So I do think Hungary are going to get a bit of a paste in here. Um, I think we're going to see a comfy 2-0, 3-0 Germany win, um, but nothing for me to get involved in. Right, OK. Um, as you say, Hungary coming to the final game at one point, having lost to Portugal and then getting an excellent 1-1 with France last time out. They were excellent that day and OK rode their luck at times but did give it a go in an entertaining game. Now they come into to Germany knowing anything but a win will see them going out of the tournament. They are in good form though and the loss to Portugal was their only defeat in their last 13 played. The head-to-head shows history against them having lost their last four friendlies and their last competitive match was in the 1954 World Cup final which Germany won 3-2. Interesting, in the group stages, they were in the same group and Hungary actually beat the Germans 8-3. As far as Germany, Germany sits second, as you say, on three points after losing here to the world champions France 1-0. And then last time out, they deservedly beat current European champions Portugal 4-2 in a fantastic game. And to be honest, they should have scored more. Now today, they face bottom of the group, Hungary, knowing as long as they do not lose, they will make it through to the round of 16. But if they win today and France lose, they can still top the group. I could not see them winning. I could not not see them win this game. And in the last 10 internationals, they've averaged 2.16 goals. But interesting, they've conceded in 13 of those last 16 played. Interesting is that is Germany in the last seven matches have kept their opponents to three or less shots on target in each game. Unsurprising for you in this game, Hungary over one and a half 
team yellow cards. Um, 1.77 marathon. I got it because I was going to take 1.73 sky bet last night, but it's dropped to 1.62. Um, bet three to five are already 1.62. So I'm going to take the 1.77 marathon, but it just means that we need two individual players to get a yellow card. And having checked back, Hungary have only got one red in their last 20. So that, that f- makes me feel a bit better on that. Um, Hungary's last 14 competitive away games has seen them get at least two cards in every single one. And overall in their last 20, they averaged 2.55 cards. And in games, and the both group games where they were at home, they got 2 v Portugal, 1 3 France last time out. I cannot see them getting anywhere near to what they need and want tonight, which is a victory and an unreal stat. As I said, a 14 in a row, this is landed. 1.77 is a lovely price based on that. The referee is Sergei Karazasev from Russia. He did the Italy v Switzerland match and gave just two cards. But my note said that it was not a feisty game at all and he was fine and didn't seem to miss anything. He also did the Germany World Cup qualified defeat here in March be North Macedonia, where he gave out eight cards, five of which were for Germany. His last 20 games refereed overall averaged 4.45 cards a game. Sporting index go 20 to 23 for Hungary, which means they need a sending off or three cards if they want to buy. So that's where I am at on that game. OK, mate. All right. And once again, best of luck with that. Thank you very uh, much. And then obviously the next, the final great game, or they're playing simultaneously with the other game in that group, is um, Portugal taking on France. Um, and the quirk of and one of the things I didn't like about this when I looked at it pre-tournament of this third place finish business is that Portugal actually can go into this game knowing exactly what they need to do. Um, yeah. And they'll know whether three points is enough to qualify. Um, depending on what happens in the earlier games. Um, if it's not enough, then you're going to see a completely different game to what you would if, if it yeah, isn't. Yeah, so it makes it hard from my point of view for pre-match, whereas for you trading, you could have a look, couldn't you? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so it's one of those, if it is not enough and they are trailing, you know, again, it's sort of an unofficial. I would be on late goals as we, you're going to see all hell break loose. They're going yeah. to have to, they're going to have to charge forward. They're going to be, it'll be frantic as they're trying to get a goal. Um, you know, a normally solid Portugal. I said, I said in my very first pod when I did the anti post stuff, um, and I tipped Portugal as a trade that, uh, they're just normally really solid and he's made them so hard to beat. Yeah. Um, and they go and ship four goals against Germany in a game where I thought, well, we'll back the draw and 1-1 will probably be how that plays out. Yeah. Uh, we saw a six-goal thriller. So uh, they are up against what I do still think is the best team in the tournament. Um, agree, I'm yeah. not going to say they fired on all cylinders yet, but they just look to me as if they haven't got out of first gear and, and that they, I know you can't say they will turn it on, but they, I think they've got the players that can. Yeah, uh, maybe pacing themselves. Yeah, they, they've lost in Dembele. Um, who came on in the last game, went off injured, um, but he is only a sub. So I think they're going to go full strength. I do think that France are going to nick this game. Uh, I am going to have my one and a half goal bet because I do think that um, we'll see goals, whatever. Um, So again, exactly the same as the other one, nil, nil, 20 minutes. um, Third on 20, 27, 35. Goal goes in any part matched. Remove your liability. If it goes in too late, then just let it ride. Blah, 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 blah. blah. But you can pick that up. I've said it enough now. Um, but it is one as well to pay if you're watching it that you could be see a bit of squeaky bum time for Portugal. Yeah. They've never failed to get out of the group stages. Um, if it does, you know, if it does look like those points aren't going to be enough and they are trailing or it's nil nil or whatever, and that I just think you're going to see a bit of um, frantic stuff at the end. So it might be one to go in and, and lay, you know, lay late goals from sort of yeah. 70, 75 minutes onwards. Um, but you won't know that until obviously we get there. Yeah. Uh, so for me, yeah. So for me, it is just the one and a half, but I will, it will be one I'm watching closely tonight. Um, with it because there might be some opportunities to get involved yeah yeah that's to me. 
Right, OK, on France, I'll start. France sit top of the group on four points, having beaten Germany 1-0 in Germany, and then getting a 1-1 draw in Hungary where they missed some easy chances to win the match. France already know they are through to the round of 16, but a win would guarantee top place in the group. If they do finish in the top two of the group, they will have done in five of their last six Euro Championship appearances and are unbeaten in 11 group games, which includes the last World Cup in 2018. As for Portugal, they're coming to this in third place in group th on three points after beating Hungary 3-0, but then last time out losing 4-2 to Germany, where they were lucky it wasn't more. Um, saying that, they could have had more themselves as well in a fantastic game of football. Like you said as well, by the time that they kick off, they will have a good idea if third place is enough at three points themselves. Um, today, they know... If Portugal were to lose and not make it through as a third place best finish, they would be the first defending champions to go out at the group stage since Greece in 2008. This is the first Euro finals meeting between the current world champions and a defending European champion since 1992. Head to head shows they are usually very tight games with five of the last six ending nil nil or one nil. And of course they, they contested the last European final. Um, and that ended 0-0 and Portugal won that 1-0 after extra time. It's a no-bet game for me. As already mentioned, these games are usually very tight and even though a draw is fine for both teams, I have no idea what approach will be for each side or if they both try for the win. I really hope each side makes it through as both are involved in various outright bets. So, to be honest, a draw would suit me fine. I do have a feeling both may go for it not relying on the draw. So, yeah, that's a no-bet game for me. And as usual, I will follow you in on yours. OK, son. Um, so that's it. And then we've got... Um, we start the um, knockout stages. We've got Wales playing Denmark on yeah. Saturday at 5 o'clock. Um, and Italy playing Austria um, at 8 o'clock. I already think Italy look a little bit big for that game. They're 1.56. Yeah. Um I certainly haven't seen anything from Austria that makes me uh, think they can put anything up against not. Italy. Um, and the Wales-Denmark game, Denmark 1.92. Um, don't know, I'll, I'll need to look at that one a bit that deeper. Makes, uh, it looks uh, really tricky on the bet. I haven't got a gut feel for that. Yeah, I just think Wales, Wales are they're very well organised. They're a great they team. Are. They're a great team. You know, whilst they have got Bale and, and Ramsey, they're just a great team. They you know, are. They got a real good team spirit and tough to to break down. And um, in tournaments as well, they seem to be. Well, and that's it. it. It's not a points thing now. It is, you know, life or death. And I just think yeah. they, they'll they'll set up first really hard to beat and and hope they can get one. Um, so that's it. So Arriva Dirty Scotland. Um, very nice of you to pop up after 23 years and play in a tournament. It's great. And they qualify for the Euros. The furthest place they got to go was London. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and they got a they got a nil nil in their um, cup final. So yeah. I suppose they've had a great one, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, but pack the old saw tires away and we'll see them. Well, what I'll be I'm fifty now. I'll be about seventy five, seventy eight, something like that when you pop up again. Hopefully I'll still be doing this, but I can't guarantee it. Yeah, I hope so. Um, but there we go. Right. I'll um. Thank you, Scott. Scott. I'll be honest, that has really been off putting that outfit today. It's fucking ridiculous. Sort yourself out, man. I want something on. We'll be back, what, Saturday morning? Saturday. I want something a bit. Um, a bit more business like. Just a bit toned down, yeah. Yeah. Leave it with me. You yeah. actually do look. You don't look like um, Johnny Depp. You're closer to um, the guy, Mackenzie Crook, in that film. <laughs> In those films, he was he was one of the pirates, wasn't he? You, you're closer to that sort of look. That's where you're at. Yeah, yeah. facially, yeah, bodily, he's he's like a, a bean pole. Yeah, yeah. You look like you've eaten Mackenzie Crook. <laughs> yeah, you? I do. Yeah. yeah. Um, right, <laughs> and I'll, Nick Frost. <laughs> yeah, I'll leave you to it, and I'll see you. Um, have an enjoyable couple of days, and I'll yeah, see you Saturday morning. And thanks very much yet again for having me on. No, more than welcome, son. No, it's been good fun. I'm enjoying it. Uh, oh, I'm loving them. Yeah, and we'll um, yeah we'll do we'll get into the knockouts from Saturday. Yeah, okay, sounds mate. good. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Bye.